High heat and strong storms, and we're watching what is left and whether or not this is going to happen again tomorrow. Karen? All right, Ben, first at four, the coronavirus risk level is rising in Michigan, and the daily number of cases has jumped again. Dr. McGeorge digs into what it all means. Also, ready or not, the Trump administration says students need to get back to school. Ultimately, it's not a matter of if schools should reopen. It's simply a matter of how. More from the Coronavirus Task Force, the president's threat, and reaction from educators in Michigan. It's all now, first at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news, first at four, we just got this video of flooding at the Lodge and Davison. I'll tell you, I just drove through that area. It is a mess. Southbound M10 is now closed. We're seeing some storms pop up around the area, and this is one of the consequences after a burst of heavy rain. Ben Bailey standing by in the weather office with an update in the first forecast. Boy, when it hit, it hit hard, Ben. Yeah, Karen, these had some pretty significant downpours within them, but the worst part was they really weren't moving at all, and that's what caused that problem. There was a flash flood warning out uh, right there at 75 in Kniff was kind of the, the center point of a lot of that. That has since been canceled as that storm has moved south, but it's going to take a while, as you can see, for that water to retreat. We still also have some areas of thunderstorms coming in off of 23 there in Washtenaw County. No severe thunderstorm warning with this. Although again, we'll continue to monitor these as we get later into the afternoon and evening. Heat advisory remains in effect through tonight and through midnight Thursday night. And we'll finally start to see some relief as we head towards the weekend. But again, an air quality alert is in effect again for Thursday. Temperatures have been cooled because of the rain in some spots, still looking at some 90s, but expect those thunderstorms to be around at least until about sunset and after. And then we'll finally start to dry out tonight. We will look at some brief relief in that seven day forecast coming up, Karen. Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Also, first of four, we're in the middle of a coronavirus cliffhanger in Michigan. The question, can we keep the number of cases low enough so Governor Whitmer doesn't throw the state's reopening into reverse? Today's numbers are not encouraging. The state reports 610 new cases in just the past 24 hours. That is now the highest number in seven weeks. Also, we've lost another 10 of our fellow Michiganders, more families affected by the virus. Yesterday, Governor Whitmer said if cases rise too much, she will roll back some of the progress we've made. Today's numbers don't tell the whole story, though. We are also seeing a risk in the state's risk level. The website COVID Act Now has raised Michigan's level from medium to high risk for a COVID-19 outbreak. Now, remember when the state of Michigan was green? Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at what's driving that change. Daily case numbers have been climbing since June 15th. When you look at the daily numbers, it's pretty bumpy. But looking at the daily average for the preceding seven days, it's pretty obvious that we're on a sustained upward trend that's only more pronounced with today's case count. Now also keep in mind that this increase has been happening since before the holiday weekend, and we can probably expect that the 4th of July, which brought people together for celebrations, is going to lead to further increases that won't show up for at least five days after the holiday. Now cases are up, but it's not just about increases in the daily cases or even the seven day moving average. Coming up at five, I'm gonna take you inside the numbers for individual parts of the state and show you where things are heating up even faster. Back to you. Right, thank you, Doc. President Trump is threatening to withhold federal money if schools don't reopen in the fall. In a series of tweets today, the president lashed out at the CDC guidelines for reopening schools, calling them very tough and expensive. The guidelines encourage cloth face coverings, physical barriers, staggered staffing, and modified seating layouts for social distancing. The president sent those tweets ahead of a coronavirus task force, held a briefing talking about the push to get kids back in the classroom. Kimberly Gill following it for us from the newsroom with more on the task force. Kim, what's the latest here? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. As school districts struggle with the right way to reopen, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos says it's not a question of if, but how students will return to school this fall. Vice President Mike Pence says it's essential for students to have in-person learning. He says the CDC will be issuing new guidance sometime next week. There will be five documents, including decision-making tools for parents, better ways for schools to look for coronavirus symptoms, and guidance on how to use face masks in school settings. The CDC says the recommendations are not intended to replace state and local guidance, but the Coronavirus Task Force says opening schools is about more than just academics. Opening up schools is the right thing to do for our kids. 
so they don't fall behind academically and also so that children that are in need of services, special needs children, children with mental health issues, nutrition needs, have the support that they receive at the schools. Physical health and safety are factors. So is mental health. So is social emotional development. And importantly, very importantly, so are lost opportunities for students, particularly the most vulnerable among us and students with disabilities. The vice president also encouraged states to take advantage of federal funding from the CARES Act and says Congress will be meeting to come up with other options so schools can afford to take the necessary precautions. Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, always appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Well, while the White House is pushing states to reopen fully in the fall, questions remain here in Michigan. Our Paula Tutman has been checking with educators, and they're telling her teachers could get more vocal about whether that is the best approach as we get closer to the new school year. There's a growing groundswell of teachers who say they feel bullied into going back into the classroom. It's going to exacerbate the community spread. It's going to be spread through the schools and everybody in the school goes back home to their family and it spreads that way. As we reported, almost a third of teachers and parents say they don't feel safe returning under any circumstances that don't include, at the very least, a proven vaccine against COVID-19, reliable antibody testing, and mass testing. Without question, school, for many students, is the safest part of their day. It's where they get food, protection, encouragement, and yes, education to break cycles of poverty. But 8% of Michigan's teachers surveyed say they'll quit or retire rather than be forced back into the classroom if they don't feel it's safe to go back. The group by any means necessary or BAM is starting a grassroots effort in Detroit to pull back in-person learning plans. More people are going to become sick and more people will die. If we return to school, that will happen. The Michigan Education Association is sympathetic to that sentiment for communities that have a rise or saturation of the disease. I think that they make some very valid points. Paula Herbart, MEA president representing teachers and students in 500 school districts across Michigan says, as for the president and the secretary of education threatening to withhold funds to any school district that does not deem it safe to reopen fully. Michigan voters have told the DeVos family and their agenda of putting public funds into private schools and parochial schools, we have told them resoundingly twice, no, Michigan citizens want public school dollars to stay in public schools. And she is bringing that brand of snake oil to the entire country. And we in Michigan will do everything that we can to help support national organizations fight back the bad policies of Secretary Betsy DeVos and her absolute ignorant policies that are not based in reality and are in fact malpractice when it comes to using taxpayers' dollars for the public good. Those are pretty strong words. Let's just say very strong words from the president of the MEA. We actually sent her statement to the office of Betsy DeVos for a response. We got an acknowledgement that they got the statement. I've been checking my email thus far. Still no response. If we do indeed get one, we'll post that on our social media platforms. In the meantime, MEA is urging teachers to be negotiating right now with their administration for terms that they deem make them safe to return to the classroom. Expect to hear a lot more from teachers as we get closer to the actual start of the school year, Karen. Indeed, such a hot topic. So many things to factor. We appreciate the report. Thank you, Paula. All right, we do have some breaking news on a legal battle between Fiat Chrysler and General Motors. A federal judge has dismissed GM's racketeering suit against FCA. General Motors accused its auto rival of orchestrating a bribery conspiracy that affected negotiations with the United Auto Workers Union. FCA argued the case was without merit. General Motors released a statement saying it disagrees with the order and will pursue other legal remedies. Members of the state legislative Black Caucus are laying out their recommendations now for police reform. The Equal Justice for All plan calls for an elimination of facial recognition technology, plus more independent investigations in police-involved shootings and excessive force cases. The plan calls for more concrete guidelines for use of force protocols, a statewide framework for a citizen review board, and creating of crisis intervention teams that redefine the role of police. 
So now is the time that we must urge policymakers on both sides of the aisle and every level of government to take action now. You know, the time is now to shine a light on this cracked foundation of a system that we must get right. The caucus says conversations between House Democrats and House Speaker Lee Chatfield and the Republican caucus about the package of bills were well received. We're following this real closely and of course we'll keep you posted. After a series of recent defeats, the Supreme Court hands President Trump a victory on the issue of birth control. The high court says employers who cite religious or moral grounds can decline to offer cost-free birth control coverage to workers. The vote was seven to two with Justices Ginsburg and Sotomayor dissenting. The decision could leave an estimated 70,000 women without free contraception. Justice Clarence Thomas wrote that each administration has the authority to write the rules, which means other presidents could change those rules. Trump administration, meantime, is facing a new legal battle over a decision that affects international students. Harvard and MIT have filed a federal suit. Earlier this week, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ruled international students who are only taking online classes this fall be deported, or the students would have to change schools. The new legal action is hoping to prevent immigration authorities from enforcing the rule. Still heading here first at four. Ben is back with her seven day forecast. And let's see if there's a cool down in sight. Also, tropical storm prediction. It could have all of us keeping an eye on the tropics this year. Actor Johnny Depp on the witness stand how his testimony against a British tabloid brought up the name of his ex girlfriend, Winona Ryder. And later, it is the haircut people are talking about all over the internet, ladies. See if you can relate to what's happening here. Stay with us.